Hello everyone. In order to accomplish the life processes in living organism, they require continuous support of oxygen and food products. So the system which helps to circulate and transport these material across the body is known as circulatory system. So the life processes includes nutrition, respiration, excretion, reproduction. All the life processes required nutrients or oxygen supply. So this circulatory system helps to transport these material across the body. The circulatory system includes the heart and the blood vessels and the blood. All includes in the circulatory system. When it comes to simple organisms such as amoeba, diffusion is enough to circulate or transport these material across the body because the material has to travel for the shorter distances. As you can see here, this is the smallest organism and this oxygen or food supply has to travel for the shorter distances. So there is diffusion is enough for the circulation. But when we talk about the humans, it is a complex organism, right? So the material such as oxygen and nutrient has to travel for the longer distances to the to the whole body to the brain therefore they require a complex circulatory system right so the complex circulatory system includes the heart the blood vessels and the blood what exactly the circulatory system the system that contains the heart the blood vessels and that moves blood throughout the body this system also helps to get enough oxygen supply and nutrient supply that means all tissues of the body gets enough oxygen through the circulatory system it also helps to maintain or to get rid of waste material from the body lymphatic system is a part of the circulatory system that we will discuss later as you can see here this is the heart, this is the muscular organ which is present in the thorax cavity or a chest cavity which is slightly tilted towards the left side of the sternum, right? So let's discuss in detail. Let's summarize the various organs of the circulatory system which includes the heart, arteries, veins, capillaries, all our blood vessels, blood and lymphatic system. Let's understand the function of the circulatory system. The very first is heart. The heart is a muscular organ about the size of a clenched fist, which is located just behind and slightly left of the breastbone. The next is arteries. Arteries are the blood vessels or we can say a tubes that carry the fluid. The arteries are the blood vessels that deliver oxygenated blood from the heart to the tissues of the body. Next are veins. Veins are also a vessel which carrying the deoxygenated blood. So veins are the blood vessels that carry blood towards the heart. Most veins carrying deoxygenated blood from the tissue back to the heart. So the pulmonary vein is the only vein that carrying oxygenated blood. Next are capillaries. Capillaries are the smallest and most numerous of the blood vessels that carrying or that forms the connection between the arteries and the veins. They are that much narrow so the blood can travel in a single file. Blood. Blood is a connective tissue that brings oxygen and nutrients to all part of the body. Blood is one of the connective tissue. As a connective tissue it consists of cells and fragments. Right? It consists of cells and fragments and that is suspended in an intercellular matrix which is called plasma. Blood is the only liquid tissue in the body that measures about 5 liters in the adult person or a man. And it is also accounts at 8% of the body weight. The next is lymph or uh, lymphatic system. Lymph is a clear to white fluid which is made up of white blood cells especially lymphocytes, the cells that attack the bacteria in the blood. Another is lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is a network of tissue vessels and organs that work together to move a colorless or a watery fluid called lymph, which back into your circulatory system. Let's understand how this system works inside our body. This is the heart that pumps the blood across the body. 
so the very first the blood is being traveled towards the arteries arteries are carrying oxygenated blood blood rich with oxygen right so the artery is further divided into arterioles that carrying the oxygenated blood towards the capillaries capillaries are the narrowest uh, vessels that carrying the oxygenated blood toward the tissues where all tissues get enough oxygen and nutrient supply there they utilize it and further converted into deoxygenated blood this deoxygenated blood further supply it to venules and venules will carry it towards the veins mostly veins carrying the deoxygenated blood the arteries and veins and capillaries have different thicknesses depends on the blood supply arteries have thick elastic wall and a small lumen whereas veins have thin wall and large lumen the capillaries have a single cell wall structure of the heart the heart can be found at the chest center underneath the sternum in a thoracic cavity it comprises four chambers and several valves that regulate the normal flow of the blood within the body two chambers called atria are located in the upper portion of the heart with the left atrium receiving oxygenated blood and the right receiving deoxygenated blood the valves that separate these chambers are called as atrioventricular valves that composed of tricuspid valve on the left and the mitral valve on the right conversely ventricles are chambers found on the lower portion of the heart they pump oxygen rich blood into the body organs which receiving or reaching even the smallest cells similar to the atria valves also separate the ventricular chambers collectively termed as semilunar valves these are comprised of the pulmonary and aortic valves in this diagrammatic representation we see the heart have four chambers the upper two chambers are known as atrium and the lower two chambers are known as ventricle here is a right atrium and here is a right ventricle here is a left atrium and here is a left ventricle the heart is enclosed with three layers known as epicardium myocardium and endocardium together they known as pericardium the pericardium is filled with pericardial fluid this fluid reduces the friction between the two layers as they rub each other during each heartbeat there are three type of blood vessels known as arteries veins and capillaries let's understand their function in the circulatory system arteries we know that arteries carrying oxygenated blood towards the body they have a narrow lumen and a thicker wall because the blood pressure is very high in it the blood has to travel or to transport all over the body the thicker wall of arteries can bear the pressure of blood supply there is the aorta or we can say arteries that carrying the oxygenated blood towards the body they have a thicker wall veins carrying deoxygenated blood towards the heart veins have wide lumen and thinner wall the blood pressure in the vein is quite less therefore they have wide lumen and thinner walls capillaries are narrowest blood vessels that supply the nutrients to the tissue or even in a single cell let's have a look on the arteries veins and valves inside our heart they have two types of arteries known as aorta and pulmonary artery the function of aorta is to transfer or transport the oxygenated blood towards the body artery is only carrying the oxygenated blood but the pulmonary artery is the only artery that carrying the deoxygenated blood here is the aorta that carrying the oxygenated blood towards the body veins we have three types of veins the one is superior vena cava 
second is inferior vena cava and the third is pulmonary vein veins carrying deoxygenated blood but there is only one vein that carrying oxygenated blood is the pulmonary vein this pulmonary vein carrying the oxygenated blood from the lungs towards the heart so this pulmonary vein carrying the oxygenated blood from the left lung and this pulmonary vein carrying the oxygenated blood from the right lung there are two vena cavas the superior and inferior vena cavas carrying the deoxygenated blood from the upper and lower parts of the body thereafter we have capillaries capillaries are interconnected vessels that connects arteries to the veins right so they are the connection between arteries and veins that sends blood or nutrient supply towards the tissues next understand about the valves we have four types of valve in our heart the one is mitral or bicuspid valve tricuspid valve pulmonary valve and aortic valve let's have a look here at the left side we have mitral valve which is present between the left atrium and left ventricle at the right side between the right atrium and right ventricle there is a tricuspid valve that mean in the bicuspid valve it has two cusps through which the blood will supply and in the tricuspid valve it has three cusps through which the blood will supply to the ventricles here is the pulmonary valve this pulmonary valve helps to send the deoxygenated blood towards the lung when the deoxygenated blood sends from the ventricle towards the lung this valve will open the aortic valve is present at the side of the left atrium and the left ventricle this valve will open when the oxygenated blood will supply through the aorta let's understand the functioning of the heart we have four chambers the upper two chambers right atrium and the left atrium and the lower two chambers are known as right ventricle and the left ventricle the very first what will happen the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava getting the deoxygenated blood supply from the body this blood further sends to the right atrium when the right atrium contracts the blood will supply towards the right ventricle later on the right ventricle contracts and supply this blood towards the pulmonary artery the pulmonary artery carrying this deoxygenated blood towards the lungs the lungs further oxygenate it and that oxygenated blood further supply back or transported back towards the heart through the pulmonary vein the oxygenated blood supplied by the pulmonary vein through the left pulmonary vein and through the right pulmonary vein this blood further goes to the left atrium and when the left atrium contracts it sends it to the left ventricle left ventricle further pushes it towards the aorta the left atrium has a thicker wall because the blood has to supply towards the body it requires more pressure this blood further travel towards the aorta to the throughout the body this blood is further rich with the oxygen and this is known as the oxygenated blood that is very much important for the life processes in human or living organism that is rich with blood or nutrient supply circulation in human body like we know the left atrium the right atrium the right ventricle and the left ventricle right so the left ventricle is receiving the oxygenated blood right it has a low pressure it because it is coming from the lungs right and once the left atrium receiving the oxygenated blood it is sending to the left ventricle the left ventricle has more pressure i mean it has to supply to the whole part of the body right so it has more pressure thereafter it moves to the through the this aorta which has a high pressure once the uh, blood or i mean the nutrients oxygen has been supplied to the body towards all the cells it's been utilized and later on the deoxygenated blood bring back to the heart through the vena cava it has a low pressure in it sending back towards the right atrium and 
right ventricles and these further sending back to the lungs for further oxygenation so this is how the circulation of blood takes place in humans blood circulatory system in human being is an example of double circulation in which the blood travels twice in a heart through a complete cycle of blood circulation in which we see the systemic circulation the pathway of blood from heart to the rest of the body and back to the heart is called systemic circulation and then the complete oxygenated and deoxygenated blood travels through the body thereafter we see the pulmonary circulation the pathway of blood from heart to the lungs for oxygenation and back to the heart to supply to the different part of the body is called pulmonary circulation so the systemic and the pulmonary circulation together makes double circulation in human circulatory system for more educational videos please like share and subscribe my youtube channel biology fundamentals you can also follow me on instagram for more educational content link is available in description box till then keep learning and stay connected bye bye